I love it when Yu-Gi-Oh makes adorable animals the centerpiece for their archetypes. What's even better is when those cute critters are competitively viable, budget-friendly, and did I mention adorable? So the Flandries, the bane of many people's existence, is an archetype based on the real-life bird, the Arctic Tern. The Arctic Tern are most well known for their intense migratory journey that goes from the North Pole to the South Pole and back every year. Adapting this real-life adventure, the designers developed the Floanderies as birds setting out on their big migratory journey while showcasing the friendly faces and wondrous places they'll encounter along the way. Their name Floanderies, or Floanderies in the original Japanese, is said to be a combination of the Japanese phrase fua fua, meaning fluffy, wander, or wonder, and breeze. Having been localized for the TCG, Fluanderis has become Fluanderis, where the consensus seems to be that flu is a reference to flu for flying, though personally I like thinking of the flu as a stand-in for floof. For this video, let us join the Fluanderis on their travels, and experience the many real-life encounters and challenges of an Arctic turn together. Our journey begins all the way up north in Greenland, with three arctic terns known as the Floanderies. Why Greenland? Greenland specifically is the breeding site where Egevang et al. began tracking the arctic terns and therefore the birth site for our Floanderies. Since their hatching, the Floanderies have enjoyed warm temperatures and nearly 24 hours of daylight in the arctic circle. However, with the summer months coming to an end, it is time for the Floanderies to leave their birthplace and embark on their annual cross-global journey. With a long journey ahead of them, the birds have much to pack. Food for the trip, some fresh water, and a map to not get lost. The neighboring snowy owl also helps out by packing nightcaps for the Floanderies in case of cold nights. Typically, snowy owls would prey on the little birds like the Arctic Tern, but this friendly owl only wishes the Floanderies a safe journey. As all preparations complete, the Floanderies bid the snowy owl farewell, and then they are off on their adventure. Looking at the map, we can see the starting location, Greenland, marked with a tree. It might be strange that the country paradoxically named Green, despite being mostly uninhabitable, was represented with a tree. But upon a quick search, I found that Greenland, a country with a more pronounced impact of climate change, is becoming an increasingly favorable site for tree growth due to the warming climate in recent decades. Looking back to the map, we can see that the path ahead has already been charted out for the Floanderies by the prevailing wind patterns. Being expert gliders, Arctic terns can rely on winds to carry them without the need to constantly flap their wings. With minimal energy expenditure while in air, Arctic terns can stay out in open water for extended periods of time where food is plentiful. And with that, the Floanderies have already reached their first stop in no time at all. Arriving at their first stop, the Fluanderies are greeted to gentle winds and cheerful song. Perched on some European holly, a local robin fills the warm night sky with its welcoming tune. In the background, we see London's famous clock tower, Big Ben, shrouded in London's equally famous foggy nights. The clock shows five past five, a time where many would still be asleep. But for the diligent robin, this is the perfect time to practice its song. Avoiding the loud noises of the bustling urban life, the robin adapted to becoming a nighttime singer where its voice can be heard most clearly. The Floanderies take a brief moment to join in on the robin's song, and together, they break the dead of night and usher in the new day. As the sun begins to shine, the Floanderies continue their journey south. But one moment, why do the Arctic Terns migrate south in the first place? Following the summer sun from the Arctic to the Antarctic, the Arctic terns can experience more temperate weather all year long. This just so happens to correlate with better food, and all of this is only an option for the Arctic terns in the first place because they have the ability to pull it off. Speaking of good food, the Floanderies likely experience a wide variety of diverse cuisine, much like the human residents of their next stop, New York City. New York City is one of the most vibrant cities in the world. With a dense population of people shuffling around from place to place, the city that appears to be in constant state of motion lives up to the name, the city that never sleeps. Soaring above the bustling streets and towering skyscrapers is the majestic bald eagle. Having lived in New York City and having never seen a bald eagle take flight across the city, 
I thought the designers for Eaglin were being lazy by throwing together whatever imagery felt iconically American. But as it turns out, the bald eagle does in fact exist in New York City. Through environmental conservation efforts, the bald eagle has recently been making a comeback, being spotted across all five boroughs of New York City. Back to the Flanderies, invigorated by the city's dazzling energy and strong coastal winds behind them, the Flanderies continue gliding forward towards their next destination. The birds have now passed through most of the North Atlantic, already such a great feat for such small birds. With the long journey still ahead of them, the birds will need proper rest along the way. This was the point I realized. I had no idea how birds in migration sleep. I get that the birds in the Dreaming Town card are shown sleeping in their adorable nightcaps, but they would be flying over the Atlantic Ocean, with no land anywhere in sight. After some research, I was surprised to find that arctic terns, due to their amazing ability to glide with minimal energy expenditure, can sleep while in mid-air. Another amazing thing that some birds can do is to rest one hemisphere of their brain at a time. As the researchers put it, the birds can sleep with one eye open at all times. Whichever way the Floanderies choose, they deserve a good night's rest. Let's let them doze off into the land of the dreaming. Intense sunlight in an arid climate, baobab trees, the iconic African tree of life lining the background. These are all renowned characteristics of the savannas of Africa, not to mention the giant stampeding ostrich. As the largest bird in the world, a rushing ostrich is definitely a menacing sight. But these birds usually prefer to run away when threatened, so it looks like this ostrich is just having a bit of fun with the flanderies, probably even goaded on by one of them taking this chance for a ride. After some playful chasing, the Flanderies return to their journey. Seeing how the weather has gotten hotter, they will soon be reaching the equator. Climate around the equator is typically very warm. All the warmth and humidity contribute to many areas around the equator, having some of the best climates for life to thrive. One such species is the friendly toko toucan, sharing some tropical berries with the Flanderies. Toko toucans are famous for their immediately recognizable and very marketable appearance with their large brightly colored bill contrasted against their black and white plumage. Toko toucan tend to reside in open areas of the Amazon, areas like the winding Amazon River that can be seen below all the trees. Unsurprisingly, the Amazon River is also one of the largest in the world with great biodiversity. There probably is no shortage of food for the Flanderies if they decided to stay here, but everyone has a place they belong, and for our three birds, that place is further south. The journey for the Flanderies is almost over, passing the Amazon rainforest through South America, and across a short crossing over the sea is Antarctica their destination. Unfortunately for the Flanderies, the crossing from South America to Antarctica is known as the Drake Passage, the most powerful convergence of seas. With no large landmass anywhere at the latitudes of the Drake Passage, there is an unimpeded flow of current carrying a huge volume of water through it. This, together with the region's naturally high wind speeds, frequently rough waters, and risk of icebergs, ensures its stormy reputation. Storms at sea are not an uncommon occurrence for migratory birds. As such, they have evolved to develop unique skills that allow them to deal with uncertain and unstable meteorological occurrences. For example, among a bird's weather management skills is the power to detect the air pressure changes that signal a coming storm. With the advanced notice, migratory birds can adjust their flight path to avoid the storm. Sometimes though, the birds will inevitably be caught up in a storm, causing them to be blown off course by hundreds of miles. Despite the risk, some birds, like the Flanderies, may choose to courageously confront the storm head-on. Researchers found that some birds could use the storm's winds to fling themselves towards their destination like a slingshot. In the famous account of a wimbrel named Hope, this bird encountered high headwinds for 27 hours, averaging only 9 miles per hour. Once through the storm, flight speed increased to more than 90 miles per hour as the bird was pushed by significant tailwinds. And as expected, the Fuluanderis, through their determination and courage, have followed Hope's lead in taming the storm and coming out the other side unscathed. With the storms finally subsiding, the skies clear out to reveal a breathtaking sunset. 
Sunsets tend to be more vibrant after a storm because all the heavy rainfall washes away atmospheric particles that would normally dull the colors. As a well-deserved reward for their daring stunt, the Fulandris take a short break to bask in the tranquil beauty. Once they set off, it's just one final sprint to the end. And finally, greeted by the cold breeze and the welcoming squawks from an emperor penguin, the Philanderes reach Antarctica. Specifically, somewhere on an iceberg in the Weddell Sea according to Egevang's research data. Rewarding their difficult journey across the Atlantic Sea, the Arctic Terns can enjoy an abundance of food and daylight. They will stick around Antarctica throughout the summer months from November through April. And once winter approaches, the Philanderes will pack up once more to return to their breeding grounds in Greenland. Unlike the journey south, the birds can take advantage of a strong tailwind that makes their journey north much more direct and quicker. In total, the Arctic Terns will have traveled roughly 70,900 kilometers in their venture. With the Arctic Terns recorded to live more than 30 years, Egevan calculated that in a Tern's lifetime, they may exceed 2.4 million kilometers of travel, or an equivalent to three return journeys to the moon. In just 30 years, the Arctic Tern will have traveled almost 20 times the distance a human will walk in their lifetime. So that was the Floandri's cross-global journey. There probably is a lesson to be learned from this. Something about environmental conservation so that all the birds can continue coexisting with us. Or how we can learn the value of perseverance from the Arctic Tern's daring lifestyle. But for me, it's how great of a job the Floandri's archetype did in capturing the adorable cuteness of the Arctic Terns. 